I've explored many corners of this earth, but none are more endangered and more important to the health of our planet than the Amazon rainforest. I'm about to follow in the footsteps of a legendary US president to find out how serious the problem is. I'll have some company on this adventure. My friend, travel writer Kristen Sarah, will document this journey on her blog. The smaller the plane, the bigger the adventure. So we're on our way to a remote landing strip deep in the Amazon jungle, a place on the Rio Roosevelt, which is a river that was named after Teddy Roosevelt himself. It was 1914, three years after his second term as president, when he embarked on an expedition to explore an uncharted river deep in the Amazon jungle. It was a trip that very nearly killed him. They faced raging rapids, wild animals. They lost boats, supplies. They went hungry. Three members of his expedition didn't make it out alive. What better way of gauging the mood of the area than by retracing the most dangerous part of that expedition to see this untamed land for myself? It's truly amazing just to see how big the jungle is from this point of view. Not only is it the largest rainforest in the world, it is also known as the lungs of the world because it produces 20% of the world's oxygen. The Amazon is just so incredibly vast. There's plenty of spots that we've flown over that have been completely clear cut. In the last 20 years, it's lost over 295,000 square miles of forest. That's as big as two Germanys. Because of all that logging and the use of the slash and burn method, the downed trees are releasing the carbon dioxide they've absorbed back into the atmosphere, which results in more global warming. Deforestation is far from the only threat to the region. Huge parts of it are drying up because of drought. That's a direct result of climate change. The forest isn't producing the water vapor, which forms the clouds that put the rain in the rainforest. All right, this is so dense. We're making our way to a point in the river where Roosevelt and his men started the hardest part of their expedition. It was a gutsy journey. We're going to duplicate part of it to find out how climate change has altered this once wild jungle. So what do you do if you're the president of the United States? You've already served two terms. You tried to go back for a third, was unsuccessful. Do you retire, just fade away? Not if you're Roosevelt. He came down to the Amazon and did a kick-ass expedition in one of the wildest places on Earth. I mean, that guy was the most badass president of all time. He had a pet badger. He carried a gun in the White House. He got shot in the chest in an assassination attempt and got on stage and gave a 90-minute speech. Complete badass. In Roosevelt's day, the environment was so hostile that he lost a few boats along the way. It would be one of the thrills of my lifetime to actually find a boat from that remarkable expedition. Our location is right here. The Rio Roosevelt flows to the north. It's 400 miles long, with many sections that are completely impassable. We know boats were lost while navigating the rapids, so we're going to concentrate our search at a bend in the river where a lost boat would likely wash up. Torrential downpours are on the horizon as rainy season gets underway. We have no time to lose. The power of these rapids is incredible. That's where Roosevelt lost one of his men. It doesn't take much to get swept into the rapids which is exactly what happened to one of Roosevelt's crew members. His body was never even found. Oh, this is just way too dangerous. Yeah, We're just gonna get smashed to bits. I don't wanna be searching for your boat, and I don't want you searching for my I boat. I don't wanna be searching for your body either. Motorboats only go so far here. That's why we're gonna portage past the rapids 
then kayak the next leg of the river. The rapids are so powerful. I can actually feel the ground shaking. One, two, three. Tough slogging, and our kayak only weighs 50 pounds. Roosevelt's boats weighed 800. Look at this. Wow. That is crazy. Just looking at these rapids, absolutely wicked, strong, very dangerous. Scares the hell out of me. It's not the kind of place you want to fall in. So much power. It just makes sense to portage around this. For us, yeah, it's tough. But for the guys years ago, this would have been a multi-day effort. Cutting down trees, using logs as rollers. They had it hard, really hard. I just lost my footing there for a second. When you're along the water, especially with these rocks, it's really easy to get trapped in here, kind of like I am right now. This is not serious, but when Roosevelt was here, he actually got his leg smashed between rocks and a canoe. That wound plagued him for the entire expedition, and some even think it contributed to his death. There we go. Ready to pop it in? Yeah. There are innumerable rapids down this river. Sometimes you have to portage, carry your boats across land. Sometimes you can put the boat in the water and line it down by rope. This is an easier way to do it, isn't it? Absolutely. We'll just haul it up here. All right. Perfect. Nice parallel park. We're past the worst of it, so let's see if we can do the next section the way Roosevelt did, paddling down the raging river. We just got our first taste of what Roosevelt was up against. Luckily, Kristen recovers quickly. Roosevelt, you got, too, you got too cocky. Back on track. Only two more miles to go, and we can start searching the bend in the river. There's a fishing lodge up there where we can get back into motorboats and make some real progress. We've done our research, and we've narrowed down the location that way. We're on our way to the bend where the current could have carried one of Roosevelt's boats. A depth finder and an underwater camera are part of our search arsenal. We are going to put this underwater metal detector to work. I'm hoping it'll detect any of the boat's iron nails or fittings. Sometimes, though, the best way to search in the water is to get right in. Can you pass me the metal detector? Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Just waiting for that sound. <laughs> of course, there are all kinds of things living in the water here. Electric eels, flesh-eating piranhas, and the tiny, blood-sucking candiru fish. It's been known to actually swim up your urethra if you pee in the water. Got anything? Not yet. You want to know a little secret? I'm peeing right now. I mean, that's your choice. I'm not doing it. I survived. <laughs> For now. No luck quite yet. Back in the boat. That's how you do it. Let's move the search a little further north. In Roosevelt's day, he would have encountered a lot of wildlife. The biggest is the local crocodilian species, the black caiman. That's a big one. And wouldn't you know it, he's right where we want to search. Black caiman are the apex predator of the Amazon. An adult caiman really has nothing to fear out here except for humans. It's got good reason to fear us. Just 50 years ago, this king of the river was hunted almost to extinction. 
Over the last 100 years, its population has decreased by 99%, all for its high quality skin, which produces shiny black leather. Caimans feed on fish, like piranha and catfish, and mammals, like the capybara, the largest rodent in the world. As caiman numbers decline, their prey thrives. The growing number of capybaras are destroying vegetation and crops. Hunting caimans is now illegal, and their population is slowly recovering. So it's encouraging to come across a fully grown caiman out here. Getting a little closer, so he's gonna feel trapped. We should back up. These animals can't seem to catch a break, though. Their new enemy is drought. North of here, caiman populations are down again as water levels drop. I'd love to get a better look at this guy. At the same time, let's lure him away from our search site by offering him some lunch. Downriver. There's a big caiman right where we want to conduct the search for Roosevelt's long lost boat. So we're trying to lure him away. It takes a few hours to convince the caiman to clear out and now we're losing daylight. We'll set up camp here for the night. But first, I want to install our stealth cam to get a sense of the state of the wildlife here. This spot looks pretty good. Check this out. There's all kinds of tracks and activity. We have a hoof print here. Might have been a deer. Look, green banded moss. So beautiful. The Amazon basin contains so much biodiversity that 10% of all of the Earth's species are found here. There are some amazing animals I'd love to catch sight of, especially one of the world's rarest big cats, the jaguar. Any warm-blooded creature that comes by here will get picked up by the infrared sensor. All right, wildlife, anytime. Show us something. This spot here is totally flat enough. I'll stick up my tent right here. Here you go. Just one little fire. about uh, 20 after five in the morning. I'm gonna go check on our cameras. Some people say it's insane to camp out here because of the threat of jaguars. They can hide and ambush you very, very quickly. They have been known to kill people. Needless to say, I'll make this a quick check. Okay, we've got a brocket deer, and a Brazilian tapir, both prey for the jaguar. But so far, no jaguar. They need huge amounts of territory to thrive, so they've been hit hard by habitat loss. There are now 80% fewer jaguars than when Roosevelt was here. Smokes, those are huge. That's incredible. Must have come down to take a drink. You see it stepped and then dragged its claws. Oh, yeah. And that's not the only wildlife this beach has to offer this morning. These weaver birds make the most intricate nests. Hello, Mr. Tarantula. So how is climate change going to potentially affect the Amazon jungle? Well, it's hard to say, but a 2009 study suggested that as little as a three degree rise in temperature could destroy up to 75% of the rainforest. And that's combined with deforestation, which not only destroys the area being logged, it also increases soil erosion and degrades rivers. Bad for the rainforest, 
and bad for the wildlife that lives in it. Our quest continues. Based on Roosevelt's notes, we've searched up and down this bend. One of the only places left is off this beach. I'm using a glass-bottomed bucket. Simple, but effective. Nothing yet. Do you know how deep it is here? Do you have the depth sounder? 10 feet. Our research tells us we're close, but there's no sign of it in the river. But what about land that was underwater 100 years ago? This sandbar is the only place left to look. Because the water level is so incredibly low right now, it could be exposed maybe just under a few feet of sand. Time to pull out some shovels and start digging. Oh. Right here. There's definitely something buried here. Here come the rain clouds. This is exactly what we fear. It could rain for days, and this sandbar will be submerged again. We've got to keep digging. It doesn't look like this rain is going to let up. It's discouraging to get this far and think I won't even have the chance to find the trophy I'm looking for, the legendary Theodore Roosevelt's lost boat. We're calling it a day and hoping nature is on our side tomorrow. We've looked high and low around the rapids and found nothing. The only reasonable place left to search is the sandbar. The metal detector was pinging, so I feel good about our chances here. I recruit some locals to help. We're gonna be here digging forever. Yeah. Something? Something wood? Hey! Oh, yeah! We must have dug a dozen different holes on this beach, and finally we've come across... Well, it looks like a boat. Well, it looks like a boat, so it looks really, really promising. Really big. Yeah, it's definitely it a boat. It seems like it's really big. It's definitely a boat. This really looks like a dugout canoe. <laughs> yeah. The boats on the Roosevelt expedition were made from a single tree trunk, split in half and hollowed out. They measured about 10 feet long. Oh, lightheaded. I think we might have found Jimmy Hoffa and Amelia Earhart and D.B. Cooper. We've got most of this boat excavated. Let's see if we can at least give it a budge. Ah. Ow. Awesome. The good news and the bad news. The good news is we found a boat against all odds. The bad news is this boat is much too new. It's been painted. There's no way they would have painted their boats. This is an old fishing boat that got washed up here during the rainy season. Yeah, we might as well pull it out of here. One, two, three. Oh. Ah. We have a boat. <laughs> well, this may not have been the boat we were looking for, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's here along the river where he was. Looks like a dugout canoe, but not the right vintage. And the boat, Roosevelt's boat, is still out there. We've searched the entire bend. Now, the wet season is approaching and river levels are rising. If we want to find Roosevelt's boat, it'll have to wait another year. Of all the American presidents, Theodore Roosevelt was the most passionate about saving the environment. During his presidency, he protected over 230 million acres of public land, including 150 national forests and five national parks. So, is the Amazon tamer than in Roosevelt's day? It's hard to say. We faced many of the same challenges he did 100 years ago. What's different is today the rainforest is suffering the effects of human activity through deforestation and climate change. Great strides have been made to reverse the damage, but it'll take a lot more effort to make sure this remains one of the wildest places on Earth.